hello guys welcome back to my channel civil softwares today we are going to solve question number two in our frame analysis we have already solved this question if you have not seen this you can go back to my video and see it uh, in today's video we are going to solve this question so let's go to sap 2000 okay at first i want to say something um here we are assigning one two three grid lines along z direction and along x directions we are going to give one two three four grid lines okay four on x and three on z direction so let's go to new model then let's just confirm that units are right it's correct so let's go to grid only in x direction we are putting four in y direction it does not matter let's give one in z direction we are giving three grid lines and as far as the spacings are concerned we are going to edit the spacing so do not bother about this now click on ok now let's go to xz plane okay now let's edit the grid data modify okay we are using the spacing not ordinates here okay now let's give the x grids okay uh, let's go to the question along x direction we have one two three four lines so it's three meters four meters and one three four and one right so three four and one y direction it does not matter and along z direction we have one two three grid lines so one and two it's 3.5 and total is five meters from here to here so from here to this point it's 1.5 meter right so 3.5 and 1.5 of this 3.5 and 1.5 okay let's keep 3.5 let's keep 1.5 okay so this is how you get the grid data now let's draw the frame members okay let's see the question at first we are going to give frame section one here second here and third way up okay let's go to draw frame cables and we are not uh, editing any of these things right so let's make sure if we have at first set our load multiplier to zero so define go to define go to load patterns okay let's just keep zero for the load multiplier because we are not concerned about the self weight here we are just analyzing how our frame members react on the loading only okay click on okay now let's go to this frame drop frame cable uh, straight frame okay we are not changing anything over here okay uh, in moment releases we are keeping continuous if you keep pinned over here then it will act as hinges in between two frame members but if you keep continuous it's like you have welded the two frame sections okay for for example if i draw a member over here all the way to here now i need to continue this frame right so from here to here okay now if you do this if you keep continuous that means here you have welding it's fixed but if you keep pinned over here it's like you are giving the hinge pins you are you are giving the pin support to connect these two so we are giving continuous for now okay now let's go here and click yeah okay after you are done click on escape okay after you are done with this you are going to give joints over here okay assign joint restraints so we are assigning fixed support over here apply then we are giving hinge support here right we are giving hinge support here okay we're done with this too now uh you need to give the loads it may seem a little bit difficult to assign the loads like this and like this and like this which are not along the global axis right okay let me clarify you about global axis and local axis so global axis means x y z this this x y z this is global axis and it does not change at any point in any member it is the same but if you talk about local axis it varies according to the member local axis for this member and this member varies for this member it varies right so i'll explain you about the local axis too okay let's just display what local axis looks like okay go to view 
go to set display options then let's go to um, local access okay just click on apply click on okay okay it is in 2d view it will be more clear in 3d view so view set display options then click on apply click on okay now i would like to emphasize a little on this 3d view now okay so these are our local axis okay these are our local axis so the, along the member it is local axis one along the green it is local axis two and along the blue it is local axis three for this member right and for all the members along the particular member the red line is local axis number one green line is local axis number two and blue line is local axis number three so we are going to assign the loads in local axis not in global axis so let's go and let's add a new window let's work on exit plane it is a little bit easier for working on that plane so we have not assigned any kinds of loads over here right so let's just display the local axis here too mm, click and apply okay so we're going to assign loads along the local axis right local axis so if we need to assign two kilonewton load which axis do we apply the load on two kilonewton in this member so along the green right but the green green axis is pointed upwards but we are applying the load downwards right so we have to give negative two negative two for this direction along local axis number two so let's select this member at first okay we are okay let's see the two kilonewton load is in between the member right so let's go let's go to assign let's go to frame loads let's go to point load and we are going absolute distance yeah okay now here you can use relative distance because in 0 0.5 relative distance 0 0.5 means half of the member right so along half of the member that means in at, at exactly half of this member's length two kilonewton load is applied right so let's go to this let's keep this in relative and in 0 0.5 we have two kilonewton load and at others let's just keep zero right okay what you need to be careful in this section is here load pattern is dead coordinate system is local not global okay now when you as as soon as you click local here you are going to see option number one two three i have already said about what axis is local number local axis one two and three so this green line is local axis number two so we are going for two now i have already said that green direction is positive for upwards but our load is acting downwards right is acting downwards so we are going to give negative of two here minus two let's just click on apply and see okay apply let's see okay two kilonewton load in downward direction it is already displayed over here right click on okay so now it may be a little bit confusing to see this two kilonewton load because of this local axis if you want to hide this local axis arrow go to view set display options just uncheck the local axis click on apply okay let's select this window view set display options uh, click and apply okay so you can see two kilonewton load is already applied now let's go and apply the uh, uniformly bearing load of three kilonewton per meter okay this also is acting along the local axis two direction correct this is also acting in local direction direction two so every load here is acting in local axis direction two and all are negative so let's go and give the uniformly varying load of three kilonewton per meter okay let's just select this click on assign then just click on uh, frame loads distributed load then we are just going to apply the load on local axis 
and its local axis number two load type is force and we are just clicking on absolute distance for this okay at zero we have at zero we have three kilonewton per meter but at its full length we have zero correct okay so at zero we have zero and at this point we have at zero we have three kilonewton per meter and okay so if you keep relative distance and at zero if you, you you can keep three kilonewton per meter right if we have to do in relative distance per perspective then uh, it goes this way right and at one one is its full length right in if you talk about relative distance one is the total length so at total length we have zero kilonewton per meter but if you are going to give it this way then because of these zero values at different points it is not going to give us the uniformly varying load so let's just make this all at zero and apply three so that we get uvl if you had uh, kept a uh, zero at 0 0.25 then it would create other kind of loads okay it would it would not create the uniformly varying load over its total length so let's click on apply and see how it goes but let let's not forget to keep negative over here because we are in local axis direction number two okay okay you can also do from the absolute distance but i'm just teaching you how to do from the relative distance perspective let's click on apply so this is how you get three kilonewton per meter of uniformly varying load in this member now the last one is uniformly distributed load in this member of five kilonewton per meter so easy go and click on this member go to assign go to frame loads go to distributed load so at zero at zero we have minus five right let's just keep all as it is minus five minus five and at one also minus five right so it's udl it is entirely minus five at all points local axis two okay everything looks perfectly fine okay let's just click on apply so this is how you get the uniformly distributed load too the point load is not shown here let's just display that too display so object load signs frame okay let's just click on apply it should come here okay you can see the uh, okay this is the uh resultants okay it, it has just uh, uh splitted our load of two kilonewton in y direction and along the x direction okay now if you want to see uh if you want to see okay let's go to display so object load assigns frame okay let's not show anything like this okay it is not looking good now click on okay okay so this is our udl and you have different kind of options over here let's go to display and see so object load assigns frame okay okay you can see here span loading forces it is current display system we you can choose frame local global anything you like okay let's click on frame local and see what it displays right okay click on apply so you can see here now it is not showing values right so span loading values click on apply now let's see okay now it's perfect right click on okay so have got exactly like in our question two kilonewton three kilonewton per meter and five kilonewton per meter let's run the analysis okay we are not running this model case so click on this and do not run this run now for this we need to save this practice number two click on save now it will load okay so this is bending moment diagram so if you want to see the joint reaction go to this point go to joints then click on apply okay here you can see the joint reaction loads right now if you need to see the bending moment diagram shear force diagram or axial force diagram you need to go to this icon go to frame cable tendons then you just 
go to axial force diagram click on apply okay this is how your axial force diagram looks go to shear to two for shear force diagram sfd so this is your sfd and moment diagram click on apply so this is your moment diagram let's just click on okay now you want to get details about the particular members okay about the sfd or axial force diagram about this particular member just go to this member right click on it you are going to see the details you are going to see the shear force diagram moment diagram you can see the deflections as well okay and if you want to see of this member go to this member right click on it then you are going to see the value okay if you want to see the values at different point then you can see this way so this is the result and shear this is result and moment okay so deflections over here you can see the value of deflection changing at each point peak deflection is at this point you can see okay click on done so this is how uh, we just completed the frame analysis of these two questions so i will be doing the cross modeling in my next video so i hope you guys like this video bye bye thank you all